John chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Hey, Shalom. Much mercy to all you brothers that are um, teaching and understanding this new covenant, um, growing in the favor of the Lord in this last time. Um, I wanted to go into something, um, going into the, the tree of good and evil, and then the Lord, he, he is the tree of life. So when you go back to the garden, the to... to to really understand the, the characteristics of Satan, this is why the Lord said that uh, certain men were of their father, the devil, because you still have men telling you to hold to the old law. And that's the same equivalent of the snake telling you that you, you shouldn't surely die. So when guys tell you to hold the old law, they're, they're in the same spirit of telling you to hold that old law. And that is the serpent. That is the serpent seed. That spirit of uh, taking from the old law, and it's, it's really worse now because the Lord have come, came, and if you hold to that old law still, then you make the blood of the Lord of none effect. So, so the serpent in the garden, uh, Satan, that spirit, that spirit is on certain men. And they're very deceptive in this last time. So you have to understand that um, that spirit of Satan is on our people really hard. So when you teach men to hold the old law, especially right now in spite of the Lord coming, um, then you're in that same spirit as the serpent and it's very easy to see guys in this last day it's, it's very heavy this is uh genesis 2 and uh 16 and the lord commanded the man saying every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of for in the day that thou shalt eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You see? So, it was a commandment that you don't really eat from that tree. So, by guys eating, by, by Adam eating from that tree, and what happened? They surely died. So, this is the same thing that happened... When you go to Genesis 3, when um, the serpent got Eve, the Eve from the garden. So it's even worse now because when you, before I get that, let me, let me get this real quick. Let me, let me tie this together because I heard a guy, he read 2 Corinthians 3 and the the scripture tell you that the latter, the latter killeth. You see? And he skipped over that. Because guys' whole thing is to get you to hold the old law like the serpent is trying to get you to bite from that old, that tree of good and evil. This is Galatians 2 and 21. I'm going to go right to this point. It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law... Then Christ is dead in vain. So if you hold men to the law, I'm a, I don't know how many times we have to say this. But if you hold men to the law, then all your righteousness, all the righteousness that, that the Lord did 
um, it's in vain. And, and you're frustrating the grace by holding to the law. Now, the reason guys are frustrating the grace is because they're cursed under the law. So by holding men to the law, it is the same spirit that they were in right here in Acts 15. I, I just want to go to this real quick in Acts 15 because they make the Lord's word in vain. Acts 15 and uh, 10, it says, Now, therefore, why you tempt you, God, to put a yoke around the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So by this time in Acts, the old law has been broken, and the Lord came and established a new law, and men were still trying to hold you to that law, just like the serpent in the garden. Now, let's go to Genesis 3. So if the Lord brought a new law, Matter of fact, let's grab this real fast. I just want to go over this real quick in, in, in the contents of the new covenant and understanding that that old law. If you hold to that old law, then you you make the death of the Lord in vain. So a lot of guys don't even understand what they're doing. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 9 then said he lo, I come to do thy will. He take away the first that he may establish the second. So when the Lord came and took away the first law and he established a new covenant, that old covenant is void. So now by guys holding, trying to hold into that old law, they're in the spirit of their father, the devil. And this is why the Lord said that in, in um, John eight and nine and 10, the, the Lord was going, in, he was going into it with these guys. They wanted to kill him in John seven, eight, nine, that, you know, they wanted to stone him. So even in uh, John 9, the Lord said that they told the Lord that they were Moses' disciples. They told, oh boy, they said, hey, we are Moses' disciples. So they were holding to that law despite of the Lord coming and bringing something new. So you got to understand this. Let's go to Genesis real quick. So despite the Lord telling Adam and Eve not to eat from that tree, they ate from that tree. I mean, Eve, she ate from that tree. They ain't got Adam to eat from that tree. Uh, Genesis 3 and 3, it says, Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the of the garden. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God saith, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the serpent, even though the Lord told Eve that if she ate from the tree, even though the Lord told Eve that if she ate from the tree that they was going to die and, and here come the serpent telling you to eat from the tree so it's the same thing when guys be like keep the law still rehearse the righteous acts and the Lord told you that Moses gave you not this manner that I gave you Moses gave you not this manner let me grab that so you got to understand what the scriptures are saying and how they line up guys that are in the spirit of having you still keep the law despite of the Lord coming and just like the serpent getting you to eat from that tree despite the Lord gave you a commandment so this is a new commandment that you uh, you follow the Lord um this is John 
real quick. So the Lord, he is the tree of life. And I want to go to that real quick, but I have to get these couple of scriptures just to show you that men are in the spirit of that serpent in the garden by keep getting you to hold the old law. You see what I'm saying? So once the Lord come and you still hold to the old law, you make the blood of the Lord of none effect to yourself. You see what I'm saying? It is heavy, bro. It really is. Yeah, here it is right here. I just want to get this point. See these points in the scripture, which which is a sword we're using to cut through the false doctrine and the false teaching in this time. This is what this is supposed to be used for. So when you cut a man, cut when you cut certain men, they can heal. You see what I'm saying? Better than before. And to cut the false doctrine, to cut it down. So it's the same thing as the Lord's telling you that if a pre, if a tree don't bring forth fruit, he gonna that's gonna be cut down and, and thrown in the fire. So we have to cut down the lies and the false doctrine of you that you're supposed to hold the old law. So when you understand the similitude of the serpent in the garden telling you to eat from that tree, and then you understand guys are telling you to still eat from the old law despite the Lord came. They're in the spirit of the serpent. And you can identify it real easy. That guys are of Satan. John 6 and 32. Then the anointed said unto them, Hamashiach, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread for heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. So Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. All right. Moses don't have what the Lord has. So when guys try to get you to keep that old law. They are in the spirit of the serpent in the garden was trying to get you to keep something that the Lord commanded you not to keep. So now the thing about this and this time that the only ones that's going to really understand the Lord and keep the Lord and understand what the Bible is saying is the ones that the Lord has written in their hearts. So like these guys be talking about somebody hate them and the elect and all that. Well, what are you the elect of? The elect of what? Satan? Because the elect are not going to be held to that old law. The scripture said if it was possible, you would deceive the elect. You cannot be sealed by the old law. And by, man, by these these demonic serpent these these devils these these guys in these camps getting you to rehearse and to keep the old law you make the blood of the lord of none effect so you're not in the spirit holding to the law this is that's the point i want this is this that this is the point i am getting to and all you other guys that's teaching the law you're in the spirit of the serpent you see it's real it's it's a lot of ways it's a lot of different ways to be able to see guys in this last time now check this out. Second Corinthians three, because this guy broke this down wrong. You see, guys are guys are wicked. They're like that serpent. They're trying to find any way to keep you under the law. It's crazy. Second Corinthians three and two. Ye are your own epistles written in your hearts, known and read of all men. For as much ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of the anointed minister by us, written not written by ink. But by the spirit of a living power, not in the tables of stones, but the fleshly tables of your of our hearts. So the old law that was written on stone is not the law written in, in you in this last time. It has nothing to do with that old law. This is a new thing. <laughs> this is the new covenant. It's not the new covenant old laws written in you. You guys don't have no understanding. And the, the, the things you're teaching, you're teaching it like the serpent. Trying to find a way to make men keep the old law. Because a lot of you guys have been cut off from the spirit. And how do you know men been cut off? They're holding you to the old law. So when you hear these um, elders talking about they're, they're the most hated. No, no, you, you're the one that's teaching the most uh, uh, corrupt false doctrine, man. They have the worst doctrine. They have the worst doctrine. They don't have new bodies. They don't teach faith. They're telling you, and then this guy, I think I've seen a video about Edomites or whatever. And that shows you that they have no understanding 
of the um of uh, of the Gentiles. They're ashamed of the Gentiles. They're ashamed of the Gentiles, bro, believing. So these guys, they don't have the doctrine. A lot of you guys in the New Covenant, certainly you, you hate the Gentiles too. And you're in that serpent spirit trying to keep men to the old law. Trying to bring men back to bondage. Bewitching men. This is what these camps are doing. They're bewitching you. So just like the, 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 the serpent did in the garden, he said, hey, you sure not surely die. Well, you're going to surely die if you're holding to that old law in this time. Um, 2 Corinthians 3 and 5, it says, it says, and such trust have we through the anointed to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is God. Who have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, not of the old law. Guy, this guy totally skipped over this whole thing, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth. For the latter killeth. For the old law killeth. Alright? But the spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death written and engraving on stone was glorious. So that the children of Israel could not stand fastly behold the face of Moses with glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, was to be done away. So the latter killeth. And this is why uh, the, the Lord told Eve in the beginning, if you eat from that tree, you shall surely die. And what happens? This, that, this law that guys are holding you to is the ministration of death. And it says, how shall the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? So the ministration of the new covenant, this is the new ministration that we're ministering. We're not ministering the old covenant, mixing it in with the new. You guys that are doing that, you're in that spirit of the serpent. For if the ministration of the condemnation be glory, much more do the ministration of righteousness exceed glory. So this new covenant exceeds the old covenant. All right. This is the understanding of that. The old covenant was glory was to be done away. It was done away when the Lord came. So now let's go to John 15 real quick. It was real easy, man. <laughs> John 15 and, and one, the tree of life. And men that are holding you to the, the old covenant there in the spirit of the serpent in the garden. John 15 and 1. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth that it may bring forth more fruit. So if you're, if you're bringing forth real fruit of the spirit the Lord is going to purge you even more to bring forth more fruits of the spirit. These camps don't understand the fruits of the spirit because they don't have the fruits of the spirit. And you guys holding the Moses, you don't have fruits of the spirit. It's clear because you don't have mercy on the Gentiles. You're ashamed of the Gentiles believing. You're ashamed of certain Edomites believing and certain uh, nations believing. You, you guys are ashamed of that. You don't have no mercy and you're waiting on a new body. So there's no faith. That's why a lot of guys, they've been cut off. They don't know they've been cut off. This guy doing all his walking, boy. You better say some of that walking for all them steps. You're going to be walking down there in hell. <laughs> Teaching that false doctrine. Um, John 15 and 3. Because this is what guys are headed. Teaching men against the new covenant. Not teaching men mercy. Teaching men false doctrine. Got men waiting on new bodies. So men really won't repent in the body they're in. And the doctrine they're teaching is leading men straight to hell, for real. A place they don't believe in, and that's even worse. John 15 and 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, so guys, for guys saying that their righteousness is filthy rags, yes, your righteousness is filthy if you don't believe in the Lord and his covenant right now in this body that you're in. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit itself, Except, the, of, except it abide in the vine. So you have to abide in your house, in, in the anointed, Hamashiach. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So you have to abide in the Lord and his covenant. This is only how you made clean. 
If God's got you waiting on something, this means that they're not whole and they're not being clean. Yes, their righteousness is worth filthy rags still. John 15 and 5, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I am him, the same shall bring forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So if you're not in the covenant right now, you're not doing anything. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and men gather them. So if you're not abiding in the Lord, men are, are gathering you. Where are they gathering you? They're gathering you in these camps. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. So if the Lord is not gathering you in his covenant, men are gathering you in his time to their camps, to their doctrine, to their for their to their false prophecies. You see? And so by you being gathered in camps, it says, and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words, these words in red, abide, he says, my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done to you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples as my father have loved me. So have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. All right. So there's no mercy in the old law. There's only mercy and grace in the new covenant. John uh, 1 and 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth was by the anointed Christ. So you have to understand that certain guys that are teaching you to hold to the old law they're in the spirit of the serpent despite the fact that the lord came you don't need that old law righteousness without the law has manifested and so by guys that are teaching you um to hold the old law they're in the spirit of the serpent you shouldn't surely die just keep the law rehearse the righteous acts that's satan bro so when you go back and try to rehearse those righteous acts you make the blood of the lord of none effect and with that, man, repent to the new covenant, come out of false camp doctrine, and you don't need the old law to be righteous. You're righteous without that law. But this is all of faith. And with that, a shalom.